All right, hey there, this is Christian from Hertz, Tribeca Trade Group, with your end of day market recap. And um, wow, certainly enough events um, to kind of to watch on the tape today. You know, thought it was basically just going to be uh, the usual jobs report today, but um, you know, we had the, the missile launch last night, so a lot of nervous hands, I would say, in, in the marketplace. A uh, bit of a surprise, and um, you know, this is why, as I said earlier in the trading room, I really don't like to pay that much attention to the ADP report, other than it kind of gave us a false signal um, this week, which was really strong. But, um, you know, just going back from my days at a, as an institutional trader, I never liked this report, this ADP report. It just always seemed to be noise in terms of what the actual report is. So this came in, if you remember, back on, what, Tuesday, 263 versus 185. Everybody thinking we're going to have a strong report. The only thing that, that looked a little bit, um, that showed a little bit of a signal here was that the previous month was really revised down, but still um, didn't make up for what we had today, which was they were expecting 180 and got 98. So again, keep that in mind next month when you're looking at when this ADP report comes on and the headlines roll across the tape about the ADP jobs number. It's a lot of times a false uh, a false signal for what the actual number is. Their survey is sometimes very off from what the, the actual change in the non-farm payrolls is. So I heard there was, there was a possible excuses for this number was that uh, the last month was particularly cold. Back in February, it was warm, so we may get a bigger report next month. Who knows? But um, if you're looking for a silver lining in this dismal report, is that um, the uh, the average hourly earnings was was right in line or right on the screws and not really showing too much inflation. Maybe this doesn't give the Fed as much ammo to do all these rate increases that they want to do this year. So that's possibly a positive. You know, there was a knee-jerk reaction this morning, which always happens around big economic data. Uh, we started to go lower, but uh, really held. And then we had a couple false break breakout signals today. So looking at the whole week, uh, we did not really move at all. I think we were down about 20 basis points in, in the SPY. So uh, you know, if, if you're somebody who day trades a lot, this was probably a frustrating week for you. Uh, you know, it just, we, we talked about this, um, uh, you know, I talked about this in last week's video, how I was expecting chop and, you know, you want to make sure that you've got the right portfolio. Um, if you're like me and if you trade options and cash, um, I actually view cash as a much safer place to be right now. Um, as long as you have a, a, a systematic process where you where you know where you're going to get in and out of positions, um, like I have been doing, and this is my um, this is my cash portfolio. We actually added a couple names today that uh, that did really well today. So um, as long as you have a systematic approach and and being very disciplined, if if prices hit your stop uh, your stop levels, and of course defining all your stop levels before you get into the trade you know that's that's the key in this market uh, you have to have your levels and something programming so, something that's programmed um, to tell you to hit you on the head hey you've hit your stop price and get out um, so that's how uh, we're functioning at Tribeca trade group I've got trades on and if they manage to hit stops there's no questions asked I, I you get out of them and and you move on. Um, so I actually feel that's that's a better system right now, considering, you know, if you have options on, which we went over this towards the end of the day, uh, this market shop will just destroy your option premium, uh, especially the shorter dated pr uh, positions you have on, the worse it's going to get for you. So um, I actually did uh, unwound a few positions that, you know, anything basically, I don't even want May positions at this point. Uh, we've got earnings season that gets that kicks off next week with the banks. I just think there's going to be a lot of chop. Um, the other thing I would say, which I put in the recap today, um, it was certainly a dull market. No reason to really short a dull market while it's boring. Uh, you know, if you look at what happened to gold today, um, gold was up huge and all these uh, 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 
fake traders on Twitter last night <laughs> were, uh, were tweeting about gold. Well, I don't know fake, but I don't know. Pajama traders are left and right are, are sending, uh, you know, levels about what gold is doing and what it's crazy, what oil is doing. And um, it's a complete waste of time. I, I've never seen this. You know, I'm new to Twitter. I've only been on Twitter for about a year and a half. But the fact that people are taking pictures of like where futures are and then I, I, I don't understand what they're trying to get out of that. But <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe thinks it's crazy and it's fun. I I, I don't know. I, I never really understood uh, sending out futures all hours of the night every time it moves 10 basis points. But um, so here's a good example. Gold was up uh, about 1% and kind of held that through the day. The one thing that, that I was watching was the 200 day moving average and um, uh, we did not hold it. So uh, I actually sent a sent a funny joke out today about uh, about Mutumbo blocking uh, gold at the 200-day moving average. So, um, going back to what I was saying, you know, really not shorting a dull market. You know, obviously, um, I think it's appropriate to kind of take to have a little bit more of a cash position right now, but I don't see any uh, point in shorting this market because we haven't breached any support levels. If and when we we breach support and and it's no longer an uptrend sure i'm all about shorting um you know unless it's a couple individual names that that are really weak or some sectors but for the, for the overall market we've not really broken anything um and if gold was raging and if bonds were raging uh bonds is like the same uh, you know bonds and gold have been doing have been moving kind of lockstep i would say for for the last at least for the last couple of weeks but no break of that trend line that i keep uh, referring to so i have no position in bonds um, and no reason to have a position in bonds right now because they're just going sideways uh, until we get a firm break out of that sideways range. So um, on the positive side, oil, um, that actually climbed above the 200-day moving average last night and held. You know, sometimes these candles tell, like I said, with gold, tell a different story in the beginning of the session or, or in the middle of the day. You always, It's always the, more, the, the end of day print that's most important. And, um, um, it, you know, so to see this close above the 200 day moving average is progress, in my opinion. So while energy names uh, were actually down on the day, um, XOP ended down 50 basis points and still underneath that 50 day moving average. You know, I think you want to evaluate energy names one by one. There's certain ones that are stronger and there's certain ones that are weaker, especially with with uh, the overall ETFs at the 200 day moving average. Certainly there's ones that are going to be above and there's ones that are going to be a below. So if you want to take shots at these energy names, uh, my opinion is you um, you can go long against the 200 day moving average. Uh, we've certainly done pretty well with that in the uh, in the trading room. Um, OAS is a name that I'm still long above the 200 day moving average. Um, Halliburton, I'm long in cash with the 200 day moving average as the stop. Um, DVN, I, I actually unwound today. It's right at the 200 day moving average. I just don't want to have that many. I don't want to load the boat on energy um, right now. Uh, you know, I want to play a couple things for a bounce, but I, you know, I just kind of uh, took a glance at my positions at the end of the day and said, you know what, you got too many energy positions on right now, and I don't want to be overexposed in something that's that I view as a pretty weak area of the market, not in an uptrend right now. Um, again, climbing above, some names climbing above the 200-day moving average, great. I've got to find support, but I don't need to load the boat in, in energy names right now. Um, some other things that were actually moving today because, you know, I, I, I so what I do in the beginning of the day, um, just to kind of give you a, an idea, is I set alerts where I think things where I'm interested in getting long names, you know, possibly for day trades, possibly for a little bit longer. You know, Apple has really done nothing basically all week long when you when you look at it in that perspective. Facebook, I had an alert. I thought Facebook could actually get going today. Never hit my alert, uh, which was right around 140, 140. Um, so no trade, you know, very easy. Um, Amazon actually came back at the end of the day. It was basically flat for the day, down a little bit. Um, Baba was really the name that, that got going today. Um, I actually started a position. Um, so here's what we saw in a, in a bunch of names this morning was the first five-minute bar. Always want to wait until these bars close. Um, I started a position, and I said, let me wait till the bar closes. And I didn't do anything uh, with it. I didn't actually add. I know some traders were looking at, we were looking at Baba all day today. Some traders added on the dip. Um, I didn't. 
but I held that starting position and, and actually earned some nice profits on it. So uh, we had some turnaround in a couple of names. JD was okay today. JD is, has um, just seen repeat uh, repetitive call buying in this one. A um, couple, couple other names that I thought were interesting was PAH platform. I, I like this chart a lot. I took this trade this morning. We saw some some call buying right in the beginning of the day. I think the chart looks great. Um, right on the top of value, sideways pattern for about a month. Um, so I gave this one a shot and uh, went out to August in this one. A um, couple other interesting trades, WPX, they've been going after uh, WPX calls the last couple of days. Uh, again, I don't want to load the boat in energy, but um, doesn't look like a horrible uh, looking chart in uh, in WPX, maybe hitting some support here. Um, Wirehauser, uh, I've been talking about the, the, the uh, looks like this uh, friend sends us con con confirms talks with Acorn just rolled across the headlines right now. in uh, in Bloomberg, this was a headline earlier, the name got halted, but it looks like they're, uh, they're confirming. Um, so I've been talking about uh, the, uh, what do you call these names? Lumber names, lumber and packaging, is it? Um, uh, what is this one? Yeah, I think that's what you want to call these names. BCC is another name. Uh, so nice call buying um, in this, uh, this WY wire hazard, which we've seen call buying in the past in this name, uh, is breaking out. Um, I actually identified this yesterday, and uh, and I gave this to subscribers uh, yesterday uh, before we saw the call activity. But um, nice, real nice day for this name and breaking out. So same thing in BCC. Um, this one maybe not to the same extent, but uh, name similar name that looks pretty strong. Um, I actually took a position in this RFP today. Um, in cash as well. So another name, we saw a little bit of call buying in this name earlier in the week and just kind of struck me as very similar to the action that we've been seeing in uh, in Wirehauser. So if you go back and if you look at uh, a multi-year chart, um, this is what interests me. At one point, this was about a $20 stock. It's a $5 stock right now. I'm long versus the 200-day um, moving average. We'll see how that goes. If I get stopped out, not an issue. Um, what else did we get today? Uh, Teva, there was um, a story that they are selling some of their business, uh, one of their business segments. Uh, we saw a call buying in that one. AKS Steel hammered, uh, calls being hammered uh, the last two days. Uh, a couple of traders took this trade yesterday um, on, on rumors yesterday that uh, there was somebody who's possibly interested in taking them, taking them out. So just colossal day in this stock. Uh, we hit this one really nicely, up 8%. Um, with weekly calls being purchased yesterday and uh, monthly calls being purchased today in AK Steel. But one of the, so there were a few trending names out there, even though the majority of names didn't have momentum to them and so forth. Um, Mylan as well, which I know a couple traders in the room uh, got long this name a couple days ago. Um, real nice day for this name as well. Um, you know, just doesn't fit my my model of underneath the 200 day moving average, but um, real nice day for that one, up 1.6%. A couple of interesting orders on the put side, um, MAT, uh, Mattel, uh, pretty aggressive put buyer in Mattel. You know, if you're looking for something on the, on the short side, it almost looks like it wants to break that support. It's around $25 at this point. Remember on earnings, it got crushed. It's been kind of trending down a little bit, um, but a big put buyer coming into Mattel. Um, and then on the ETF side, a couple of interesting prints that went up. EWI South Korea. You know, maybe somebody is thinking that, uh, you know, what's happened in Syria has spread to South Korea. South Korea was one of the best performing international ETFs a couple of weeks ago and uh, has really been selling off pretty hard uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, down another 80 basis points. So someone thinking that, who knows, maybe this head, this thing heads back down to here. Um, I did not take that trade. I just kind of watched. Um, EWG, which is the Germany ETF. So a little bit of put buying in some of the hottest areas of the markets. Um, you know, no, obviously, I, I would say the hottest area of the market right now is, is India, but some some put buying going on in uh, some of the other countries that have been that have been pretty strong in 2017. Uh, I thought there was one other put trade that I had on here, and then semis. This could be a little bit of protection. 
Um, that's why I think what's kind of going on, maybe a little bit of speculating on South Korea, but maybe a little bit of hedging in semis, which have been really strong. You know, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I see no reason to kind of to short the semis right now. If they start to break trend and maybe break below the 20 period exponential moving average, which is the blue line on my chart, sure, um, you could possibly short, but uh, while this thing is just uh, touching support right now and, and bounced a little bit on support, no reason to speculate on semis going lower. I would rather let the price tell me that. Uh, watch the, the, the price tell me that there's a break in trend. I'm not going to speculate uh, that there's, you know, uh, I saw somebody on CNBC yesterday say, oh, yeah, the semis are a great short. You're out of your mind if you're going to try to short the semis uh before they actually break trend. Um, you want to play that game, have a ball. But <laughs> uh, I would rather let the price let the price break a significant support area and then fine. Um, then it's a different story. But so that's kind of the theme of, of today's market, you know, just because I think it was boring, um, not so much boring in terms of events, but boring price action. Uh, I'm really not going to short this market until we see some some significant uh, areas that are that are breached. And right now, I don't see that in the S&P. Of course, small caps look a little bit weaker. Um, looking at this chart, you know, we're still managing. You know, we're hanging on by a thread to the uptrend, but we haven't broken it yet. And uh, I'd rather again wait for the price to tell me that. So thanks for watching tonight's video a little bit longer than usual. Have a great weekend and look out for this weekend's video as well as this news newsletter. If you want to catch this weekend's newsletter, we put um, really good analysis and we really try to find the trend in, in individual stocks and in sectors that are trending. So we do we do look for the those uh, the momentum in the market. There's always momentum someplace. You just have to look hard enough. So we'll have that out in this weekend's newsletter. Uh, visit us at tribecatradegroup.com. Coupon code TTG if you want to get half off the first month and see what it's all about, which I suggest you do. Thanks very much and have a great weekend.